Welcome, Bun Runner. The glory days of the video game arcade might be a long way behind us sadly, but they certainly haven't been forgotten, and in this video I'm going to take you back nearly 40 years to those heady days that played such an important part in our youth. The year is 1982 and we are all present at one of the greatest times in coin up video game history. You won't find any fruit machines, penny pushers or fixed price machines here, these are the true arcade classics that lit up dingy smoke filled rooms, sat on stained carpets whilst they delighted audiences and drained people's pockets of all their spare change. 1982 set record revenues for arcade games and was part of the so-called golden age of arcade video games. Names like Sega, Atari, Konami, Data East and Nintendo have all become synonymous with gaming and so it will be no surprise to see them feature heavily on this particular list. This is where many of today's popular franchises started, multiple innovations took place and the genres that we know and love today were formed. All of these titles play every bit as well today as they did back then and deserve to be remembered as true classics in the annals of video game history. I just wish there had been space to include more games, as I had to exclude more than a few of my own favourites. Shout outs to Poo Yan, Tax Scan, Tron and Space Duel here, but I think you'll find it pretty hard to disagree with any of these entries. Rarely has there been an arcade sequel with such an enormous expectation on its shoulders. Nintendo's popular follow-up to Donkey Kong decided to keep the single screen platforming action of the first game but do it in a very different way. Now Mario is placed in the role of the antagonist, the only such game to do so, with you playing the titular son on a mission to save his father. By jumping across platforms, climbing ropes and collecting keys, you can release Kong from his cage and complete the role reversal. It was the arrival of Pac-Man some two years earlier that created what's now become known as the mascot game, with a cute and recognisable character that drew in new audiences. Pengo is undoubtedly one of the best games to copy that formula and most likely provided the inspiration for the popular children's TV character Pingu. Like Pac-Man it also features single screen maze based gameplay but with a very original slant that saw you using the icebox around you to crush the enemies. Unashamedly inspired by the story of Tarzan, so much so in fact that the original iteration of the game, named Jungle King, led to lawsuits from the estate of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Taito's Jungle Hunt was widely praised by the video game press of the time for combining several different types of gameplay. On a mission to save your lady, you must swing across vines, avoid being eaten by crocodiles, jump over rolling boulders, and even stop yourself being the next meal for a long lost cannibal tribe. Atari had already pioneered the inertia based game genre with titles like Asteroids and Lunar Lander, but took things one step further with Gravitar. Straight away you notice that the glow and white vectors have been upgraded to colour ones that look even better than ever, and then the multi level game design draws you in even more. It was Gravitar that went on to inspire hugely popular home computer games such as Oids and Thrust, and is without doubt one of the most underrated titles in Atari's vast arcade catalogue. Although snake games have been around for some years, albeit in a much more basic form, Nibble have brought them back to life again by taking some added inspiration from Pac-Man. Now your snake is restricted to the confines of a maze as he tries to eat all the treats without biting his own tail as he grows. Once forgotten, the game was brought back into the mainstream by the excellent documentary film Man vs Snake starring Tim McVeigh as he fought to win back his amazing arcade world record. In Data East Bump and Jump the goal is to drive from the beginning of the level to the end whilst bumping the other road users into obstacles and jumping over hazards such as large bodies of water. 
These other vehicles come in two different types, cars and trucks. Whilst the cars can be bumped into obstacles or jumped upon, the trucks can only be destroyed by landing directly on them, so it presents a much tougher test. This is a hugely fun and enjoyable coin-up but also got some great home conversions too. Back in the early 80s, arcade games based on licensed properties were still pretty unusual, so Buck Rogers stands out as one of the earliest examples. To be fair, the interpretation of the original content to create this game is pretty loose, but there's no doubt that people would have been drawn in on the name alone. But I would bet that what drew audiences even more was the outstanding pseudo 3D graphics, that still look impressive to this day, something that would become somewhat of a trademark for Sega over the years. It's a little known fact that Donkey Kong was originally going to be a game based on the popular cartoon character Popeye that was repurposed when the deal with King Syndicates fell through. But Nintendo was so enamoured with the character that they went back for another go and created this quirky single screen platformer where you are competing against your arch rival Bluto to win the love of the one and only Olive Oil. Retaining all the charm of the source material, Popeye proved to be one of Nintendo's biggest arcade success stories. One of the earliest arcade games to be developed by Konami, the Time Pilot has proved a huge favourite amongst high score hunters over the years, and it's easy to see why. Featuring multi-directional scrolling, you take your jet through various periods in time taking out the enemy aircraft and rescuing the free-falling airmen. Despite its fairly repetitive gameplay, the non-stop action in Time Pilot really keeps you hooked, and it's easy to see why the game is so fondly remembered by gamers everywhere. Hubert is undoubtedly one of the most famous characters out there from the early days of video games. This foul wealth alien has even appeared in several big budget Hollywood movies, including Disney's Wreck-It Ralph and Pixels. It's an isometric platformer where you jump up and down a pyramid trying to turn all the squares the same colour. In your way are some random enemies trying their very best to stop you. Frustrating at first, Hubert is a game that really starts to grow on you. At the time of its release, Sega's Zaxxon coin-up was very unique, as it was the first game to employ axonometric projection. This technique simulates a 3D effect from a third-person viewpoint, using shadows to indicate the ship's altitude above the ground. It was also the first arcade game to be advertised on television, with an $150,000 commercial produced by none other than Paramount Pictures. It proved to be money well spent, as Zaxxon was a huge hit for the historic company. Originally meant to be called Tutankhamun, the title of this game had to be shortened when Konami realised that it wouldn't fit on the marquee. But that bizarre story aside, Tutankham is actually a very innovative arcade adventure and presents one of the earliest examples of what we now know as a dungeon crawler, predating Atari's much more famous gauntlet by three years. Fight your way through the many cursed tombs, collecting treasures, avoiding the traps and find your way to the exit. Joust certainly has one of the most outlandish ideas of any video game ever. Those guys back in the 80s must have been doing a serious amount of drugs. You ride on the back of an ostrich, flying around the screen trying to joust the enemy knights from the back of their buzzards. You do this by landing on top of them, or flying into them higher than they hit you. Collect the eggs before they hatch, avoid the indestructible pterodactyl, and team up with another player in the first co-op arcade game ever.
the highest grossing coin not released this year, pole position was a real game changer in the world of arcade racers. Licensed by Atari for release in the West, it offered up the most realistic simulation of Formula 1 that anybody had ever seen, especially in its sit down form, and defined a template that would be used by similar games for many years to come. It also provides one of my earliest arcade memories, and for that reason holds a special place in my own heart. Pole Position is an all time arcade classic. Undoubtedly Universal's biggest hit, Mr. Do has become a cult classic over the years and helped spark a short lived craze in digging games, alongside the likes of Dig Dug and Boulder Dash. The game had more than a few quirks of its own, however, including the titular clown, who became an instantly recognisable character and somewhat of a mascot for the company over the years. Mr. Do is a game that's easy to pick up and play, but much harder to truly master, and that's probably why it's still so well loved today. Originally developed by Japanese coiler manufacturers Irem, before being snapped up for release in the West by Williams Electronics, Moon Patrol managed to successfully combine elements from both driving games and shoot em ups to great effect. It has the player trying to shoot down various UFOs, whilst trying to avoid the craters of rocks on the inhospitable lunar surface. It's also credited as the very first video game to feature parallax scrolling, a technique that is often associated with other games that came some 10 years later. I think it's always been well established that Dig Dug contains one of the weirdest plots and concepts of any video game ever, but I also think that its pure quirkiness is what made the original Namco arcade game such a massive hit. I mean you're a little man who runs around in underground tunnels using a giant air pump to blow up the dragons and other big bloopy things, whilst dodging falling boulders and collecting the magic fruit that somehow grows in those dirty tunnels. It all makes perfect sense right? For those who somehow don't know, Millipede is the fantastic sequel to Atari's classic 1980 coin-up Centipede that actually plays even better than its predecessor. Millipede adds one very big component to the already winning formula, Dynamite. By shooting the boxes of TNT, you can cause a huge explosion that takes out everything around it. The other major change here is the addition of extra enemies, most importantly Fireflies, which mainly contribute to the new bonus rounds between levels. In burger time you control our heroic chef Peter Pepper as he tries to build himself some burgers. To do this you must go around the screen and walk the length of each ingredient so it falls one level. Each burger is completed when all the ingredients have been dropped from their platforms onto the plates below. While making these burgers Peter Pepper must also deal with three enemies who are out to stop him, but a quick spray of pepper will stop them in their tracks. This is easily one of my favourite platform games in the early 80s. I know this list isn't in any particular order, but I just had to leave the amazing Robotron 2084 until last. Designed by the legendary Eugene Jarvis, this game single-handedly created the twin-stick shooter up genre and is rightly regarded as one of the best arcade games of all time. It might have been brutally tough to play, but it had that magical it factor that kept you coming back for more, and with each play you'd increase your score just that little bit more. There are very few coin-ups in this period that I'd rather play. And that rounds up my look at the greatest arcade games of 1982. Are there any others you can think of that should have made the list? Or do you disagree with any of the entries that I did include? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Before I go though, I must thank all of my little patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, James Taylor, Neptune, Chaotic, Seth Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamer Man, Tiago Piera dos Santos Silva and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours including this YouTube channel then please go and check out my Patreon right now. 
You can get access to a host of extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.